Hey folks, Quilly here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program, lots of Windows Edition. In the last episode, we deployed a satellite around the moon to try to complete a contract, specifically this one over here. And it's got that line, have a part on the vessel, and some Googling has confirmed that this is almost certainly just a bug. It's referring to a missing part. Maybe the contract was before or after I changed the mod, something like that. I don't, I don't think I've changed my mods, although I have been updating the mods as some new little things come out, so that might have broken some sort of connection there. Um, in any case, uh, I was talking last episode about editing the save, and then I remembered what you can do. Alt F12 opens the debug menu over here, uh, which has a lot of different cheats and things you can do. Some of them are just fun for playing. No unbreakable joints, uh, no crash damage, but in particular, infinite fuel is really fun because you can make spaceships without any fuel tanks, so they're super light, but still have an engine on there, so they are they, they can do insano things. It's kind of fun, but there's this contracts page which lists all of your contracts. And in particular, it has a complete button over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this quest as being completed. I'm gonna go ahead first and just confirm that, okay, we entered the orbit of the moon, yes. Uh, it completed orbit the moon, which was a contract. So we completed that one for some money and some bonus science. And then we lost that stage. Okay, so that is empty. So I'm just gonna confirm that it actually completes properly. Position satellite in specific orbit of the moon. We've done that, I am completing it. There we go. And Alt F12 to hide it and then it uh, listed as being completed, which is fine. I mean, if it needed an extra part, I would have brought an extra part. I had lots of stuff for it. I brought the goo canister, which is what it needed. So there we go. Uh, this looks like the contracts plus window hasn't refreshed yet, but that quest is indeed done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move myself into more of an equatorial orbit. And the sweet spot to do that in is where our current orbit of the moon sort of crosses its plane, which is kind of a pain to see. Um, this isn't quite right. I guess it'd be right around here, right? Around, around its own plane of, of rotation. So right around here, just ballpark, we're going to want to run a maneuver. I guess we're orbiting the other way around. That's true. doesn't really matter which side I do it on. Okay, so I'm going to... It's going to break a bit because it is giving us a little bit of a boost at the same time. So we're gonna be coming around the top here and then coming down. So we're burning it opposite of that. So we're gonna turn and combine some retrograde. But again, because we're combining the two, it's not really gonna use that much. Okay, that is relatively good. But we wanna bring bring down the other side because that's too high. Um, ideally, I wanna be 250, 250 is really it, isn't it? So whatever our apoapsis is gonna be, Now, interestingly enough, if I wasn't planning this in maneuver, it'd work, and I just simply locked to anti-normal, it would actually work a little bit better. Uh, but that's okay. Oops. This direction. There we are. Counter that a bit to bring it back up. Bring it back up. Yeah, it can be really finicky to get it exactly the way you want over here. You know what, we'll just call that good enough. Still be a little low for some of the scans, but we can fix that after. We've got the excess fuel, um, and that's going to be fine. Although what I can do, since we did complete that mission, is I can check to see if we've got a new one on offer. And we do specific orb of Kerbin, recover a part. Um, it's a lot of money for recovering a part, and it might be fun to try out. Test the atomic motor in orbit around the moon. That also might be a lot of fun. We're going to go ahead and cancel the drogue. It's not that much money, and it's a big pain in the ass. We could do it with a plane. That would be the way we'd do this, with a plane. Test the drogue. Eh, uh, you know what? <laughs> Might be a good excuse to develop some more planes soon. What the hell? Let's take it. Um, the satellite ones in orbit around Kerbin, these are a great way to raise some money, if you want. In fact, they are worth a lot of money. But we're doing okay on cash right now. We still have a lot of uh, contracts. I might do it. You know what? I'll take it, because I'll do it between episodes. That's fine. Um... We'll get back to you. Offer expires in five hours. Nah, that's gonna be a pain. Let's try something else. And recover a part, same thing. We'll go ahead and just leave that out for now. We'll decline those. Capcom, great mod to be able to um, accept and, de de and decline contracts without having to go back to the space center. Okay, in any case, uh, you're gonna lock onto the node. We're gonna save because we're going to fast forward to the maneuver alarm. 
Now it's predicting that this is gonna take a two minute burn. That's only because I have my engine derated a fair bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back up probably to 100% here, because it's a fairly chunky maneuver. Um, go away. And turn up the thrust limiter again. So most likely this is only gonna be a, you know, 15 second burn, something around there. Certainly less than a minute. All right, and a little bit more. I'll start with like 10 seconds left. I think that'll be plenty and go. Yeah, there you go. In fact, that's even better. All right, so the only reason I'm doing this is because we're gonna get higher quality scans, not for a mission exactly. Well, that's not true. It is in fact for a mission, a mission to scan the planet over here. All right, and then both sides are a little bit low, our apoapsis and our periapsis. If I burn here, it'll raise both. So basically, I'm going to burn here long enough for the apoapsis to hit about 250. Which will also be raising the peri a little bit until the peri sort of moves over to here. There we are. And then now I don't want to move the apoapsis anymore. So I will simply, actually, I don't even need to do that. I just need to quick save. Warp to here. Vroom. And we'll just manually burn prograde until our periapsis raises to about 250, which seems to be the optimal spot. I'll verify once I'm here that both sensors say they're in the ideal range. And I think they will be. I think the biome was a little low. The radar one was a little bit, was perfect. The radar one was perfect and should continue to be perfect. Let's see here. So this is the biome one is now ideal and the radar one also ideal so they're very happy at about 250 maybe just over 250 so we're turned prograde so just go ahead and burn and a scooch more there we go just raise the period just above 250 and then it flips around and that's okay all right so now if we go and we check our scan sat big map what we're concerned about is this orbit over here you can see it's covering both poles now we will eventually get a full scan of the moon both biome and altimetry wise, which will complete two more quests for us, which is great. So let's go ahead and leave this satellite here and just go to the space center. Also being a polar orbit like this means um, it's gonna be eclipsed by the moon much, much more rarely and um, not for very long. Well, I guess the amount of time is gonna be the same, but much less frequently will it be eclipsed, which is nice. Um, maybe, it, maybe it averages the same. I'm trying to, I don't know, whatever. Anywho, uh, we did complete quests, which did give us some more money and a tiny bit of science, but not a whole lot. Let's warp to the morning. And our next mission will be to design something that can land on the moon and collect some uh, some soil samples. We want some, uh, uh, collect some rocks. This is gonna be like proper, almost Apollo style. Get some rocks. We do have a little bit of science. Do we have enough to unlock stuff? No, literally everything on this level is 160. Just shy. If I needed one of them though, if I did need one of these, I could get it. It would be very easy to get four points of science. I don't know that any of this is going to be required to assist in our moon landing, though. I think we're okay. Might be nice to get the main sail, but I think we'll make do without it. Okay, so you remember the rules that we have set for ourselves, which are, first of all, I always require me to have a pilot whenever possible for these space missions. Whenever, like, you know, if it really doesn't make sense, then maybe it might be different. Um, but yeah, whenever possible, a pilot is gonna be required there, and we've set a new Kerbal Science Agency, uh, Ker Kerbal Aeronautic, or Aerospace, what's NASA stand for? Something like that. Uh, agency rule that will also require an engineer to hopefully fix things, although apparently you need a relatively high amount of skill for that. So, we have now though, we have the Mark II lander, which is a crew capacity of two, which is exactly what we want. There's also the Mark I-2 command pod, which is a crew capacity of three, which is very interesting and might actually be better. I think they both have the same diameter, and they do. The Mark 1-2 command pod is twice as heavy, is the only thing. But can we re-enter with this thing? I guess there's nothing that would stop us from re-entering um, Kerbal's atmosphere with this t lander. I mean, we could do the Apollo-style thing where uh, this command pod stays in orbit around the moon, while this one um, actually lands. I don't think we're gonna go quite that far though. I think I will land with this thing and that's going to be totally okay. Anything that we're gonna want to return with, we'll probably want to put on top, but um, 
Yeah, so because we can grab the 2.5 meter heat shield and do that. And then the question is just, how do we want to land on the moon? We do need, we do need to collect rock samples. So if I just search for ore, I should get a few keywordy kind of things. Why would these register as ore? If I type O-R-E, why is this showing up? Strange. A lot of stuff going on over here. Or space? Is that better? <laughs> space or space? No, it's really not helping. Huh. Weird. Alright, I mean, we're still getting some filtering, so that's something. Um, but da -da 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 -da. I mean, we've got want containers for things, and that's it. We need a container. I've never done a drill thing. We've got the carbonate stuff as well. Um, jet engines. So what's the actual part that I need? Inflatable workspace. Those are for bases. Oops, cancel. I don't want to create a new tab. Um, I'm suspecting it's under utilities. Oh yeah, the backpack, that's cool. Can I just search for drill maybe? That's probably a little bit more than I want. This is a carbonite drill, which is not what I'm looking for. Ventral drill assembly, it's all carbonite. What does it stand for? It's like in situ. Do I not actually have Google, Kerbal, Mine, or or on the wiki and mining. Yeah, so what are the parts? Or stored in special containers, large holding tank and the small holding tank. Oh yeah, the ISRU converts stuff into fuel. Drill Omatic Mining Excavator. So I don't think I've got it. I think I've got a mission for something I can't actually do. Unless they count carbonite as a thing that I can do. Fresh ore. Don't save. Uh, I wonder if it'll tell me, if I go into the Capcom thing, if it'll tell me what mod it comes from, just in case it's a carbonite thing. Uh, this guy. That's Minus version, but whatever. Okay, let's check the science tree. I must have unlocked it at this point. It's not ion propulsion, it wouldn't be those. It's not a, under unmanned. Precision engineering? Sort of wouldn't be surprised if it was one of those. I mean, I clearly don't have the drill, though. Where else would it be? <gasps> Exocurbo core drill. No, that's science. Um, can I get... Drill my... Oh, there we go. On the wiki. I can open it up and it'll tell me what tech it's at. Advanced science tech. Which looks like a beaker. Which is this. Which is this thing. So I'm super far away from being able to mine ore. Well, that's just a tease. Okay, um, so, plan B. What missions are we going to complete? I mean, landing on the moon is still a good idea. We'll get a bunch of freaking science. And we've got the missions to plant the flag, which is good, too. Orbital survey is, yep, those things. We can take care of that. Okay, so we don't have to worry about mining. But we're still going to design a moon lander. I, I guess that's fine. Weird, though. Do, 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 do. Load, maybe? You can do it, game. There we go. All right. So, yeah, we're going to land with this, and we're going to return with this. Uh, we'll have a... Oct a universal storage octocore. Again, this is obviously a mod part. This one here. Come on. There it is. Nope, that's not connected. A little more sideways. 
Got a glow green. There, now it's properly connected. So that's got bits and pieces for all kinds of extra little doodads in there. Um, I mean, if we did land with something that uh, was a three-man capsule, we could have a scientist that could reset, like, material stuff. Which wouldn't be bad. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Assert is asteroid, which we don't want. The Gorsat is high orbit only. Wouldn't be too bad, though. I mean, we'll get some science. We haven't done any of that yet. It's just a one-shot experiment. But why, why not? we got to get use it at some point. Magnetometer. Look at me being able to say that. Uh, Multi-spectral imaging platform. Oh, that's one of the ScanSat things we just used. So we're not bringing that, obviously. We are going to bring a Mystery Goo. Orbital telescope. Even if we've done a full scan of that, we actually need it for a quest. So we're going to do that, obviously. Press mat. Too hot. Science Junior. Soil mo moisture is the other thing. Actually, I should probably have these close to one another. Eh, it doesn't matter. Just the, the ones I need for in flight. Um, and a solar particle collector. I think we've done that around the moon perfectly fine. So what I can do instead is get a supplies. Supplies! Um, based on mass. This version, which has tons of supplies, but better safe than sorry. All right, of course we could put in another row of stuff too. Looks a little silly exposed like this, but I'm not sure that we need to do anything else. Um, I guess whatever we bring back, the better, money-wise. Should I just put another service bay on here? Just so it looks a little less derpy. That's really big. Hmm. I mean, if I lighten the load, then obviously it's going to be easier to fly around, but... Let's see. Solar panels. Let's get the retractable ones. And we'll go with four around here. So we can bring those back. And I guess with batteries, and I'm not going to underdo the batteries this time, we'll grab a couple of the 400s, which is going to be a crazy amount of battery. We're going to do that. Oh, we need a place to hook up uh, parachutes. I hear those are pretty important. Shoot. Uh, to do, we'll go with a quad arrangement mount. Hmm. Actually, that would work lovely, wouldn't it? There we go. Quad shoots up there. One thing I'm not sure about is how much reaction wheels we've got going on here. Also, I'm going to bring one drogue shoot and stick it in the middle. There we go. And under science, we'll get this. There's not yet antenna ranges, so that's good. Put it right in the middle of that parachute. Sure, that'll work. Ish. Which one's the drogue? That one there. The one that's solo, so that's going to go down one level. Um, yeah, let's take a look at our lander can reaction wheels. 15, that's good. That's that's as much of everything else. And this will be, this should be able to keep its attitude re-entering perfectly fine. I'd be a little bit worried about the batteries maybe being exposed to some aerodynamic forces, though. I wonder if it might, in fact, be better... It's a bit crowded, but I don't think there's any reason that doesn't work. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that should be okay. Uh, I'm going to call this the Moon Lander Mark 1. Give it a quick little save. Okay, we've got batteries, we've got life support, we've got science experiments, we've got parachutes, we've got solar panels. This is, I'm going to say, a... Oh, you know what also be nice? Well, lander, but yeah, this is the re-entry module, which is going to be fine. It also covers most of what we want. So next we're going to want... Um, Let's use the procedural tank, because this is what's going to be responsible for actually getting us to land. We'll go ahead and set its width that way, and I think its length can probably be brought down quite a bit. Let's get the gold foil look. There we are. I like that. And we need a landing gear, or landing struts, but landing is the word we're looking for. Quick search. It's super handy. So I think we only have these, which should be fine. We could also use like one of these like landing frames, which is kind of handy. But no, let's use the regular landing struts. It's going to be okay. Four times symmetry and like this, so it's around the door. We want 
The landing struts is going to be important, of course, if they have enough room for whatever engines, but we want them as high as possible to lower our center of mass to make it a little bit more reliable. Um, so it's less likely to tip over. I'm going to put it as high as I can here. This little fairing... Is that balanced? Yeah, that is. Okay. I'm not going to put an engine underneath here. I'm instead going to use some of the, the sort of side-mounted radial engines. I wonder, actually, if we want we need twitch engines on the moon here. Let's just change our delta V calculations for the moon. If I were to use, to use the twitch... Let's see if that works. We might use thuds. But if I were to use four twitch engines... Thrust weight of four is actually really good. These have a gimbal as well, quite high vectoring range. That's actually very, very, very good. Let's put them here. I realize that they're going to be a little off-center, but that gives us room for a ladder. Uh, if we've got ladder tech, and we do, I think this is the shorter one. Just going to clip on here. Extend down. We should be able to hop and reach that just fine. But. I don't know if that's glitchy or not. If it goes into the ground. I don't think it clips. But out of paranoia, let's go ahead and use this version over here. Now, what is this actually attached to? Is that something that's going to burn up on reentry? If it does, I guess it's hardly the end of the world. I don't even know if they're physics enabled, actually. It might not be. Let's assume it's safe. What could possibly go wrong? So yeah, I just wanted to avoid having the thrusters directly underneath the uh, the stairs. I think this is going to be perfectly fine. Directly underneath the stairs, I mean the ladder. Or we'll do that instead. Clear for the ladder, a little further away from there. Uh, we need to make sure the symmetry mode is turned on. Like that. And that technically is not enough delta V. So we're going to need to lengthen our fuel tank. Okay. To take off, to go from the moon to orbit, I think takes about 800 delta V. Uh, you're going to take a similar amount going down. Although that can be, you can avoid some of that if you um, you have another stage to basically kill off your vertical, your horizontal velocity rather, I should say. Thrust to weight's been hurt a little bit by this as well, so I'm actually going to go and swap those out for two thumps. I need to make sure that, or thuds, need to make sure we have like a solid enough amount to cancel things out. And the upshot of this too is two should be more than enough. There you go, almost 12 uh, thrust to weight ratio, very powerful. So we're okay there. And in fact, that does give us, it does, it's, they're heavier so they eat more delta V, but that also means we should be able to just go ahead and bump this up. Um, this is gonna be a huge, huge margin of fuel, huge margin of fuel. And I think that's going to mean we'll just use the longer ladder as well. Turn off symmetry. There we are. There. That should be that should be a wonderful little lander. Almost certainly um, too much delta V. But yeah, I think I'm right with the moon that the escape... Well, not the escape velocity, but the delta V required to orbit. Uh, a normal 25 kilometer orbit can be achieved with around 800 meters per second delta V. There you go. So in theory, if we're in a 25 kilometer orbit, it'll take 800 meters per second of delta V to deorbit us and land gently. So by packing around 1600, we've got enough for both. That's not enough to escape, but the plan is to have another stage that we'll actually use to basically kill our horizontal velocity. So that in practice, we'll only need maybe... 300 or 400 delta V to land, which should give us the margin of error that we need. Should being the operative word here. All right, decoupler. We want the Rocco Max one. For this, we can also go ahead and undeploy those. All right, so this is going to be the stage that gets us to um, that gets us basically from Kerbin to the Moon, our trans lunar injection phase. So we can, may as well just keep using procedural tanks. But what we know is we want the 2.5 meter versions. You can use the Rocket Max ones, but this will allow us to tune things a little bit more. We will be quite happy using a Poodle engine for this, which is right here. Just like the Terrier, it works really good in space, not so good everywhere else. And we are going to want more than this. I'm not exactly how sure how much we want on that stage. 1350, I'm willing to bet that's more than enough. But, you know, why stop it more than enough? Something like this. Obviously, you know, if this is bigger and heavier, we do need more of a thing to get it out in space in the first place. But that should be good. 
That should be a ridiculous amount. And then let me go and just clone this layer completely. And instead of this, because we're going to be launching with this stage, we are going to be using... Mainsail wouldn't be bad here. We're going to use the skipper. It's possible one skipper engine. Won't have the thrust weight. Act oh, well, that's moving. Let's go back to Kerbin. Okay, this technically does have enough thrust to weight uh, to cause this takeoff, but obviously our overall delta V is no bueno. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some radial decouplers. I just want to use these, the ones that stick out more. I guess the ones that stick out more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them nice and high. Like that. Because you always want to decouple from the top of your tanks whenever possible. And then I'm going to grab this. Well, actually, no. I'm going to grab a new procedural one. And lengthen it. Grab it from the top. Oh yeah, I can't do that. Can't just bring it down. Now this is okay, but if I want it longer, what I'm actually going to have to do is just grab another procedural tank altogether and stick it at the bottom. Which is what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to take this one and shrink it. That's going to be lots. And then we're going to use struts at the bottom to make sure they don't wobble. But this ensures that the, the force of detachment is at the top, which the air the, um, the aerodynamic forces will then just go ahead and knock this away a little bit further, which is exactly what we're looking for. And then I can put down a couple of swivel engines on this. Good, and we want all these engines going at the same time. Did stage four... Did we lose some delta E? Does this not have enough go juice? Oh, right, stage four is, a, is a, another stage. Okay, I was getting confused about something. I can put this back. So now, yeah, stage six, which is everything lit down here, is gonna have 1.5 delta V, and when I knock off the two side ones, I'll still have enough delta V, although it's not being reported quite accurately. Stage four is this stage here, which is gonna be the one where I'm already in space. We do need to make sure that the bottom here Oh, that's why it's not uh, staging the way that I would expect. It's because I'm missing my external fuel ducts to do sort of asparagus -y things. Now stage five should have some stats, which is good. But again, these bottom two stages here, before we light this stage with its poodle engine, we want to be in space. And this is not currently enough for that. So we'll go ahead and um, I actually didn't want to detach. I just wanted to clone. But that's all right. Oh my God, this lag. Get back on there. You can do it. The procedural tanks do make it a little bit more wonky over here. Okay. Alt click. So we copy. There we are. And there. And then one more. It's going to be uh, tricky to get a, the symmetry exactly right. We'll probably have to make a tweak. And actually, let me go ahead and remove that fuel valve and the other one over here which will speed things up a little bit actually they're not mm, what i'm going to do they're not literally going to be um oh my god brutal be less brutal if i was using other types of engines um i'm gonna put it here so they're not going to be equally distributed across but they will look actually really cool and badass and spaceshipy that way so that's okay they're not quite the same height-wise, and I know that's going to drive some people crazy, uh, but tough. So then we need to asparagus it, which the spacing is actually going to make it a bit awkward for, unless I move the middle bit, but no, let's just do this. That's going to be fine. And like so, and then we need to fix this stuff. So the outermost ones are these. So this is the thing that's got a stage first. Then, with those bits, so they stage next. All right, so we're now at a total of 6,000 delta V, which could be better. If I'm going to be perfectly honest here. Outermost, then that one, then the innermost ones, which is good. Oh, this staging is broken. 
That improves our numbers slightly. Actually, I will go and split these up though. So it gives a second for things to break away. You save. So before stage four lights, we really want to be in orbit. And these numbers are not quite there. It's close to a thousand. It's about 2,500 in total. So, in stage six, which is this thing here, its thrust weight is actually high enough. I can probably make this a little bit longer. You know, that brings that to 129. Wouldn't want to go any lower than that. When you're higher up, like, that's going to be good enough to still, like, enter orbit, but certainly lower down, you don't want to risk anything more than that. Uh, so that gives us a wee bit more delta V, but not much. I think the thing to do will actually be to extend these tanks over here by maybe one meter each. And I still have to put nose cones on these which is going to eat a little bit into our weight. No, that's not what I meant at all. Control Z for undo. Oh my god, everything takes forever. I should probably save again. I'm, I'm worried it's on the verge of crashing. What? Watch it crash now. No. Okay. We're still lagging though. Nope, there we go. Okay, we click on this, delete that, save. I want to alt click on the nose cone, drop it there, I'll click on those nose cone. Drop it here. I mean the other thing I could do is just use bigger tanks on the side. Bigger tanks and more of, um, of these engines, which might be the thing to do. Because right now it's not cutting it. Well there's no reason actually I couldn't just use slightly bigger tanks as is. Because I can go and bump the diameter up just a couple of small notches and still use the smaller engines. Yeah, this is because this is adding a lot of extra fuel. A ton of extra fuel. Lots of extra fuel in Delta V. There we are. On the downside, these nose cones are now far from perfect, so we'll have to use a procedural nose cone on each one of these. Delete delete and delete and procedural nose cone would be procedural there it is procedural liquid tank cone oh this would actually be more fuel at that too no 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 yes oh we need a bigger launch pad that's fine um that's actually quite cool actually because this will add more fuel which now we're really overkilling it but I've run out of fuel on these Mar uh, these Mars moon things often enough that I'm okay with this. We are spending more money. But it's only government money. So it doesn't really count. Let's change the texture here, obviously. Because, you know, we need things to look cool. I actually like that for the top, and then for the side, we might go just pure white. I mean, we could continue it that way. That'd be okay. Just copper tanks? Sure. I think it's faster to get to the Atlas V over this way. Apparently I'm wrong. Oh, there it is. Okay, same thing. It's gotta look good. So it's right over there, there it is. Oops, one too many. Same thing at the bottom. It's like literally on the opposite side from where we start. Uh, where's this redstone stripe is just slightly to the right. There it is. And another one. And Atlas right there. Textures don't really line up quite right, but that's okay. Uh, if I was worried about money, I could throw some parachutes on all these guys. And that's probably a good idea. Like 
that. And just change them to make sure. So this prevents them from deploying instantly, maybe at high speeds, where they will explode. And ideally, they only deploy outside of physics range, at which point stage recover will take over. And is a fair bit more gentle about recovery. But we need to make sure that they match up. So... this layer. So we need to find this parachute, which is this one over here. That goes there. Then that's this layer here, yeah? Yep, good. And then that parachute, which is this one, goes on there. And then the last pair of parachutes goes in the other radial decoupler. All right, 700 delta V is lots. We've probably forgotten something critical. Hey, maybe a fairing would be nice. I think so. Uh, so we're going to detach right here. We want the fairing base ring, and I believe this is all procedural, so we should be able to increase it to 2.5 meters, assuming we've unlocked those. <gasps> we may not have 2.5 meter fairings. If we haven't unlocked it, it won't let me use it. Yes, yeah, so it's called shell in the normal system. Yeah, the only one we've unlocked is the 1.25 meters. We can't launch this without a fairing. It's like completely 100% flat topped. Ah, oh, come on. Alright, let's save this. What's involved in unlocking the next level of fairing? We probably just need four signs. I'm willing to bet that's all we need. Do, 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 do. In which case, what I'll do is I'll make something that rolls around the um, KSC or something like that. But, let's take a look. Supersonic flight. Mm, advanced aerodynamics. There's another fairing base here. Allows fairing bases up to four meters in size. There we go. So if we get this, which only requires four more signs, which actually, if we just say warp to next morning. So now it's been a couple of days, or maybe a day and a half, since we put that satellite in lunar orbit. Moon sat one. And a switch to it. We're going to have some signs we can send here. First of all, it might have... Let's get the Mystery Goo container, but I don't think we're flying over appropriate biomes. I don't I don't think Mystery Goo has biome base, right? It's just low orbit, high orbit. So we're not going to get any new, new Mystery Goo. It was only on there to complete the mission. But, if we... No, oh, turn that off. There we go. But, our scans, we can analyze the data that we've scanned here. Um, and it's not it hasn't finished yet, but we can go and broadcast what we've got. We always get 100% out of this, which is nice. So we're transmitting some of our map data back to Kerbin. And we'll come back later on when it's got... Uh, it, the amount of science that you've collected is based on the percentage that you've actually scanned from the surface. But that sends a little bit home, and we may as well send the next one as well. Uh, you know what? I'll just hold on to it for now. It's fine. We'll hold on to it. We don't have that much energy. We'd have to wait for it to charge up just to make sure it transmits properly. We'll just come back when it's done. So that gives us enough for me to unlock my fairing. So what I'll do is I'll unlock it, I'll whack a fairing on top, and next episode we will try to land on the moon with a couple of Kerbals. Make sure we bring an engineer with us as well. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.